Okay, so for our uh, chapter 18 test uh, focus point review, uh, one of the first things that we want to do is make sure that you're able to uh, describe the size of the categories that Linnaean classification systems involve. Are they small categories? Are they large categories? Are they medium categories? So are they things that fit into other things? You know, as you have a, a big large domain and then within it you have the kingdom and then the phylum. Also make sure you guys remember that mnemonic device or create a, a one for yourself to help remember. remember. Did King Philip come over for good spaghetti? Or you create your own? Because it's important to understand that domain falls under, uh, or excuse me, kingdom falls under domain, and then you need to know what falls under the kingdom, and then what falls under that. So very important that you're able to go up and down that, that pyramid, that classification pyramid, because if I ask you a question, hey, how many or what's larger than a kingdom, okay? What group goes into genus? What group goes into order? So you're going to have to know that to be able to answer some of the questions on the test. Define binomial nomenclature. Make sure you're able to define it and break that word down like we did in our notes in on the Amoeba Sister video. Define the term taxa. T-A-X-A. What is the most specific group of organisms that a scientific name, you know, the genus and the species part, specifically refer refers to? Okay? What is the most specific group, you know, or the smallest group of organisms that a scientific name specifically refers to? Be able to explain which part of the scientific name is capitalized. What do we call that part? What would differentiate two similar organisms that might have the same genus name? So if you have two organisms that have the same genus name, what's going to make that particular organism more specific than the other? What separates it? Okay. If we have Homo sapiens and then Homo sapien neanderthalis, what part of that name specifically makes us what we are and makes them what they are? Compare binomial names. Remember, Linnaeus created the binomial nomenclature system, but prior to that, in earlier scientific types of names, how were they different? Okay, so what did Linnaeus do differently to the scientific names that the earlier scientists didn't do? What is unique about the second part of a scientific name? Define and explain what systematics is. Know the exact number of levels that exist in the modern classification system. Nathan Nesbitt reports to student services. Nathan Nesbitt reports to student services. In the classification system, many classes fall within which higher category? That's what I'm talking about. So classes underneath what category? Describe features of the class mammalia. Describe what characteristics traditional classification base the groupings of organisms. Describe what characteristics traditional classification used to base the grouping of organisms. Explain what derived characters are. Hey, you find those on the cladogram. What similarities do species in the same genus share? Explain in detail, again, what a derived character is 
and be able to identify derived characters on a cladogram. Be able to identify the node part of a cladogram. Explain what each node on a cladogram will represent. Again, explain what each node on a cladogram represents. What does a cladistic analysis show about the organisms? With organisms, what does similar DNA sequences provide evidence for? So if we have organisms, they have similar DNA sequence. What does that suggest? Name the kingdoms that contain eukaryotic organisms. There are four of them, remember? Four kingdoms that contain eukaryotic organisms. And then there are two kingdoms that contain bacterial type organisms. Be able to list char characteristics and features of each kingdom. So make sure that you go through each kingdom and be able to give examples and tell things about each kingdom. There are three domains. Describe the characteristics of each domain. Domain archaea, domain bacteria, and domain eukarya. Explain what a dichotomous key is used for. What do scientists, biologists, use a, dich a dichotomous key for? Be able to identify the part of the scientific name that is capitalized. I think I mentioned that previously. Name the classification group that is larger than a family. And be able to do the same thing for each thing. Name the classification group that is larger than a species. Name the classification group that's larger than genus. Be able to go up and down. Okay, understand that it goes broad at the top, goes very specific at the bottom. What main characteristic or feature would be used to determine the type of domain that amoeba would be placed in? So I, if I give you a picture of an amoeba, what type of domain, or if I give you a picture of it, what characteristic or feature would you use to determine whether that amoeba is placed in to uh, domain eukarya? Would that amoeba be placed in domain bacteria or domain archaea? So what's the main feature? And that leads us to the table that I asked you to study. That table you're going to see on the test. Table 3.2. Make sure you understand how to read it. Okay, understand the organisms that are in it. Understand the features described in the table. The other thing that I want you to pay attention to. One second. Uh, make sure you guys look at the study workbook 18.1. Okay, this is a similar. Uh, classification pyramid that you will see. Okay, it has different organisms in it. We have our species here at the end, but make sure you can analyze this picture. Make sure you're able to go, okay, the species falls under the genus, the genus falls under the class, okay, etc., etc. All right, make sure you know uh, that all these organisms here in Kingdom Animalia share a certain feature, but as you go down, Okay, as you go down, the features change. Very important. You may see a picture that is very similar to this one on your test where you're going to have to analyze the different categories of the bear. Okay. Other figures and diagrams that I want you to pay attention to. Um, figures 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, Okay, 1.4, figures 2.1 through 2.6, figures 3.1 through 3.3. Additionally, on page 873 and 874 of your textbook, 
There's a paragraph about binomial nomenclature that I want you to review. We currently have, unless modifications happen, there are approximately 28 multiple choice. There are five modified true-false, where if it's false, you have to give the corrected statement. And there looks to be four or five science skills or short answers. 28 multiple choice, five modified true-false, and six science skill slash interpret apply questions.